everybody, I'm Dr. Deed Harrison from Chiropractic Biophysics Seminars and Technique and Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit, a Spine Research Foundation. What I'd like to do in this video presentation is discuss the cervical denaroll in terms of the clinical randomized trials that my colleagues and I have performed showing that this device is capable of improving the cervical lordotic curvature, decreasing forward head posture, and also improving patients' pains, disability, and health outcomes. Now, oftentimes, patients think that they can just lie on a cervical uh, rolled pillow or a cervical towel in their bed or on the floor, and they can get the same results of improving the cervical curvature. While that's a good start, that's really not by itself going to change the cervical curvature. How do I know that? Well, these randomized trials that we're about to go through, we've studied the rolled towel as a placebo intervention as part of some of these trials. And what we find out is that lying on the cervical towel by itself does not change the cervical curvature. Now that doesn't mean don't lie on a towel rolled up under your neck at night. It's a nice thing to do. It's a start instead of lying on big pillows that put your head forward. Or better yet, get yourself a contoured pillow. For example, Denerol has a Denerol cervical pillow that is made for sleeping. However, it has not been found to change the cervical curvature by itself yet either. Really, the best evidence for changing the cervical curve is via in-office methods or this home orthotic, the Denerol. So what we're going to do is go through some of these trials that have studied the cervical Denerol so the patient and the doctors out there watching this get an idea of its effectiveness. Uh, first and foremost, I need to thank my colleagues, my friends, my research uh, allies overseas at Cairo University in Egypt and from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we've teamed up over the last decade and we've produced several very, very important research trials showing the effectiveness of rehabilitating the cervical curvature. So without Professor Ibrahim Mustafa and Professor Aliyah Diab, uh, these studies would not be possible. So thank you very much uh, for your assistance with these uh, projects and all the time and, and hours. So does cervical spine correction improve pain, disability, and nervous system function in patient populations using the Denerol? Now, just to give you an idea of the effectiveness of the cervical Denerol, we, ha we have a video motion x-ray of a patient lying over the Denerol. And what you'll see when we place the Denerol peak in the lower cervical spine on the x-ray, it dramatically improves the cervical curvature. So here's the jaw up here, here's the top of the neck and the base of the skull, and you can see the shadow of the Denerol. And we see very deep extension at the segments that were around the peak of the denaral. It also very nicely improves anterior head translation posture when you place the denaral low enough. You will not get that same effect on a rolled towel or a pillow. So the denaral is key. When you see this type of video evidence, you realize in your mind as a patient, what does it do? Now keep in mind when you use the Denerol, you're going to lie on this Denerol starting at three minutes the first few sessions and then you're going to build up to where you can stay on the Denerol for 15 to 20 minutes per session. Now most people it takes one to two weeks to be able to lie on the Denerol comfortably in their cervical spine for 15 to 20 minutes. You don't wanna rush it too fast because it may create some soreness because your body's not used to the process of having a cervical curvature. So you've gotta follow the recommendations that your prescribing healthcare provider has set forth for you. Now, to find a practitioner that is trained in application and prescription of the cervical denaral, we're going to direct you to cbppatient.com. cbppatient.com is on the idealspine.com website. Now, if you'll go to this website, what you'll notice is when you do this as a consumer, you are able to find a patient directory uh, as part of the website. Now, cbppatient.com, there's multiple things that are on here as I pull up the website for the patient in terms of uh, what types of 
uh, information uh, a patient should read or look into when they're looking at corrective care for their cervical spine. The reality of it is though, uh, what I would like to show you here is uh, simply directing you uh, to how to use this website. So cbppatient.com is where patients can find doctors that are trained in the indications and contraindications for the cervical dental roll. Now what the consumer, the public, the patient has to realize is the dental roll is not something you can just buy on your own and use. It's, it's not a toy. It is an evidence-based prescription orthotic where you have to have an exam and an x-ray to identify are you a candidate for this device. So chiropractors that are trained in this will prescribe the dental roll for their patients that actually need this and are indicated candidates for it. So if you're out there, you're a consumer, you wanna know where to get the dental roll, you have to go to your prescription-based orthotic provider. In other words, you have to go to your healthcare provider. Now here, what we can do is we can look up multiple things on what CBP technique is, uh, which is the technique that has spearheaded the development for and, and the concepts for using the dental roll properly. So you can look at what chiropractic biophysics technique is, but the reality of it is, here's where I want to direct you, is find a CBP trained and dental roll trained chiropractor in your area. So you just go to this uh, directory and it's really user friendly. You just type in your state, your city, your zip code, and then you hit the find button and you pull up different providers uh, in the area. For example, I'm sitting here right now in Eagle, uh, Idaho in the United States and this can be an international directory too and what I want to do is narrow my scope or my search down to 10 miles so what I'm going to do is search Eagle Idaho and you'll see that there's multiple providers here in Eagle Idaho which is really my clinic myself uh, Dr. Shirlene Harrison, uh, Dr. Joe Betts, who used to be uh, one of my uh, chiropractic uh, partners here at my uh, facility, who now has his own facility, uh, and you can look him up as well. And then multiple individuals, for example, Justin Anderson here, who is an associate doctor at my facility here in Eagle, Idaho. But hopefully what you can do as a consumer is you can easily access dental and CBP trained providers on this website and just call them up and say, hey, I'm interested to see if the dental is right for my cervical spine. And you'll have to go in and do an examination, spine x-rays of your neck to see if you're a proper candidate for this device. Okay, so that's the uh, dental directory and the CBP doctor directory, okay? So hopefully you'll find that uh, information valuable for you. Uh, and then what we're going to do next is cover five separate randomized trials in a very patient friendly manner to where you can see the effectiveness and the outcomes of patient populations like yourself that has used the Denerol. This is our fourth randomized trial that we've done on the cervical denerol for restoring the cervical curvature and to see what it does for patients' pain and disability. The title of this project is the effectiveness of a, of a normal cervical sagittal configuration for the improvement of pain, disability, and peripheral and central nervous system function in patients with discogenic cervical radiculopathy, a one-year randomized controlled trial. This was done by uh, my colleagues and myself. Uh, this was Professor Ibrahim Mustafa, uh, Professor Aliyah Dia, and then Shima and Shima Taha. She is a PT master's degree uh, uh, candidate, or actually she got her master's degree and she did this in uh, conjunction with uh, Professor Mustafa and uh, Aliyah Dia over at Cairo University. And then myself, uh, Dr. Deed Harrison. And what we did in this particular project is we looked at subjects that had neck pain and arm pain due to a disc herniation in their mid and lower cervical spine. Uh, this particular project was published in the Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation in the year 2016 and 2017. 
Okay, so if you go to the Archives of Physical Medicine Rehabilitation, you can access this full text paper. Now, the reality of it is disc injuries are becoming more and more common in today's population due to the types of accidents and injuries and just lifestyles that we have. Now, the best way to, you know, obviously diagnose a disc injury is by having an examination and proper imaging. This is an MRI of the cervical spine. This is the spinal cord. And right here, this shows a disc herniation that is in the lower cervical spine that's affecting the spinal cord. Okay, now this is cervical vertebra number two, three, four. There's number five and number six. So right between five and number six, we have a disc herniation. Now, there are some people that when you try to put a cervical curve in that have disc injuries, it's not going to be beneficial to them at first uh, because it creates a pinching effect. Other people, we can nicely put a cervical curve in and it will improve their disorder. So in this population, we have to be very careful when we're prescribing things like the Denerol. We've gotta make sure it's safe and tolerated for the patient out there. So if you're a patient or a person out there with this disorder, don't do self-care. You, number one, you can't purchase the Denerol just on its own. The Denerol is a prescription only orthotic and this is one of the reasons why. You can actually do this wrong and you can create more irritation and injury at the nerve root due to compression or shear of the disc putting uh, what we call physical stenosis or pressure on the nerve root. So be very careful. So here's what we did in this trial. We looked at a population with lower cervical spine disc herniation affecting the arm via the nerve root C6, C7, okay? So the reality of it is this, discogenic arm pain and neck pain is a common clinical problem. The sixth and seventh nerve root are the most frequently involved due to the, the nature of the disorder and where the disc herniations occur. Despite the high annual occurrence of this condition, the ident identification of appropriate conservative management strategies still remains challenging. There's evidence for some interventions and, and evidence that other in interventions don't work. And always it is really population case specific. You have to look at the size and the location and the type of disc injury that you're dealing with. Right? So the reality is, if it is, there's still a need for further interventions and investigations. So this project, what we did, is we took people with loss of the cervical curvature that had disc herniation, that when we put their head in backwards bending, it didn't make the arm pain worse. So we thought they were candidates for then doing the dental device to rehabilitate the cervical curve. Here's the rationale behind doing this. I wanna show you uh, an image out of a 1964 project uh, by uh, Bregg and Ahmed. Now Bregg and Ahmed, what they did is they looked at cadaver specimens and they showed that when you remove the cervical curvature and you straighten out the neck and flex the neck forward, it will put longitudinal or long axis stretch and what's called deformation or strain on the spinal cord, the nerve roots, and your brainstem and cerebellum. So if you look at the picture here, this picture shows the brainstem, cerebellum, and then this is the base of the skull. This is the atlas or the first cervical vertebra. This is the second cervical vertebra, third, fourth, and fifth. And what you're seeing is, it's showing that the spinal cord is relaxed when you have a nice, configuration of a cervical lordosis. Conversely, when you lose the cervical curve, it puts stretch and deformation and force acting uh, that acts on the spinal cord, nerve roots, brainstem, and cerebellum. Now this may very well contribute to discogenic arm pain and neck pain, right? So when you stretch the spinal cord and nerve root, you're going to affect the pain and disability in people that have disc herniations. Here's an image from uh, Alf Bregg's 1978 textbook, Adverse Mechanical Tension in the Central Nervous System, Relief by a Functional Neurosurgery Approach. And if you look at this, this is a cadaver, and we've exposed, or he's exposed, 
the cervical spinal cord and nerve roots by removing the back aspects of the vertebral uh, lamina and spinous processes. In other words, the back part of the vertebra. And he's looking in at the spinal cord and the nerve roots that go down your arm. Okay, this right here, it, you know, this is your vasculature, blood vessels, arteries, veins. And then what you're seeing is, this is the image with somebody that has a deep cervical curve, and you'll notice the slackening of the nerve roots. They hang here, they're, they're under no physical de deformation. When you look at the spinal cord of a person that has a straight or a reverse cervical curve, you can now easily see there's visual tension, there's stretch, there's strain. Right? There's deformation on the, or in the spinal cord and neural tissue itself. Right? Look at the tension in this nerve root. Now, if you have a disc herniation right there, there's gonna be a huge pressure between the disc herniation and that nerve root because it's under tension. That can contribute to neck pain and arm pain and impaired function in the spinal cord and nervous system, peripheral nerves that go down your arm. So the purpose of this investigation, this randomized trial that we're doing is, if we take subjects and restore the cervical curve using the dental as the tool to do that, does that improve their neck pain, their arm pain, and does it improve their neural physiology? Here's what we identified. The group that got randomly assigned to the dental got nearly 12 degrees improvement in the cervical curvature and got over 10 millimeters change in the anterior head translation. That improved their neck pain, their disability on the neck disability index, it improved their arm pain, but also very, very importantly for doctors and patients out there, it improved the function of their peripheral and central nervous system. We looked at what's called somatosensory evoked potentials to look at the speed and the efficiency of nerve reflexes as they go down your arm into your hand and as they come back up as a feedback mechanism into the brain. We looked at how fast and what's the amplitude or efficiency of the arm signal as well as the spinal cord or central signal. And what we identified is this, look at this graph. Now, if you're not used to looking at somatosensory evoked potentials, let me just package it for you. This is the speed or what's called latency of the signal that we're interested in. In other words, this would be how fast your spinal cord sensory system is working. 6.4 milliseconds. This is somebody before we corrected the neck curve. This is somebody 10 weeks later after correction of the neck curve with the dental as part of the intervention. It went down to 5.2 milliseconds. What does that mean? It's faster, it's 20% faster. Your spinal cord central conduction time is more efficient. It's 20% faster, likely as a result of rehabilitation of the cervical curve. And then at one year follow-up, it's 5.1 milliseconds. It's still 20% better than when this person started. This is a huge change. Why is this occurring? Well, it's likely occurring because we took somebody's spinal cord or nerve roots from this position shown on the right towards this position on the left. When you slacken the system, you take force off of it, it should physiologically work better. And we believe that that explains the results that we identified in this particular randomized trial. So what did we identify? People with loss of their cervical curve and forward head translation, with disc injury, with neck pain and arm pain, when we rehabilitated the curve using multiple interventions, including the dental, the group that got the dental got restoration of the curve and they received the best long-term outcomes in neck pain improvement, disability improvement, arm pain improvement, and in spinal cord and nervous system, peripheral nervous system, functional measurements. This is a very important trial for people that are suffering from disc injuries in the neck, neck pain and arm pain. Very important, okay? Thank you for your time and attention with that trial and what we'll do is we'll move on to the next trial.